and we finally made it to see one of the seven wonders of the waterways. This is the deepest and longest canal tunnel in the United Kingdom. This tunnel isn't like any other. It's an interesting marvel of the canals. Welcome to the Stand Edge Tunnel. And who better to take us through than the Canal and River Trust themselves? Life jacket and a high-vis vest. Now we're getting serious. Starting in West Yorkshire, at the foot of the famous Pennines Hills, we're going underground. Oh, here's our ride. This interesting vessel is specially designed to safely take us into the tunnel. Since the tunnel is so tight, this boat is built differently than a normal narrow boat. So it has bow thrusters. Starting with the fact that it's electric. So you have propeller at the front and the back, and yeah. they can be set forwards, backwards, and side to side. This is like an extra trailer that it pulls almost. This, this, this is the power unit. This, the batteries are under here. So there's 36 traction batteries, um, two volts to tell, the 1,400 amp hours, so wow. plenty of power, because we used to tow boats through the tunnel with this system. And there's one big row there. And right. big row Another there. matching row there. Yeah, yeah. And so no diesel exhaust and it's quieter. That's right, yeah, yeah, it's great. And environmentally friendly as well. Environmentally friendly, of course. Yeah. Before we can go into the tunnel, we need to make sure we have the appropriate safety procedures in place. A gas monitor, so it monitors um, carbon monoxide fumes in case there's a fire or anything like that, or diesel engines. Um, it also monitors oxygen levels. Um, obviously, if the oxygen levels drop, we need to get out of there because something else is replacing the oxygen. Um, it does hydrogen sulfide because you get hydrogen sulfide in there. Some it's not not in large quantities, but uh, and then um, combined explosive gases, that's for um, methane and the like. So, wow. so yeah, so it keeps okay. an eye on things for us. Yeah. Good, yeah. good. So we don't, we're not bringing a canary with us. No, no, We've it's electronic. The, the modern okay. canary, yeah. there you go. This is Trevor. You've written a book on the tunnel. So that's right, yeah. So you're the one of the resident experts here. Before we enter, let's get some basics out of the way. Why was it built? Yeah, so there, there were three competing canals being built at the same time. To cross the Pennines. To talk, cross the Pennines, yes. The three options to get across the Pennines are to either build a lot of locks, taking boats up and over, which would take cargo vessels a very long time to cross, or they can meander their way around the Pennines, also taking a long time. Or the third option, and the fastest, is for vessels to pass through a very long tunnel under the Pennines, which is what the Stand Edge Tunnel did. This is the shortest route, uh, but it does entail digging a three and a quarter mile tunnel, <laughs> fortunately. But it is the shortest route, uh, but the tunnel proved to be a little bit of a, a difficulty. Oh, right, right. Yeah. This canal tunnel was the first tunnel built here, opening in 1811. But three train tunnels have been built since. So now there are four tunnels. That's the canal tunnel. Yeah. And then you've got the two dead bore tunnels on the left, the right. disused rail tunnels, and the live tunnel on the right. And there's loads of connecting passageways. There's about 30 odd of these. So the, in the disused rail tunnel, we have a van driving through, keeping pace with us. So we'll give him a wave at various points. If you see a smiley face, okay. it's not, not a ghost, it's our shadow. So, um, and then the shafts going up to the surface as well, right. um, every so often as well, but they're quite wet. You'll see them when we come on through them. The reason there's three rail tunnels, they built that one first, 1848, yeah. well, 1849, the date's wrong on that. Um, then that's only single track. So they opened the second one for uh, going, so you had one for each way then. Right. And then they opened the double track tunnel because the line was getting busier and busier and the freight trains were holding up the passenger trains because they were so heavy ah. and slow. So that way they had two tracks of freight train and two tracks of passenger travel. The um the tunnel is about three and a quarter miles in length. Wow. Um, it's roughly 620 feet above sea level at this point, and at the deepest point, it's about the same below ground. Wow. Um, the shafts, some of the shafts go down to about 500 feet below ground. Uh, obviously, they didn't dig them at the deepest, uh, the deepest places. So for our safety, the Canal and River Trust has a van going through on one of the disused rail tracks 
to monitor our progress to make sure we're hitting all the checkpoints and that's getting right. through. That's right, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Trevor. These are uh, PIR sensors in the um, railway tunnel right. that Alistair will be driving through. And these are PIR sensors in the canal tunnel. It's a sensor, so it knows when you're there and the light will come on. Ah. So when Alistair gets there, that light will come on. And when you get there, that light will come on. So we can communicate and you can see us visually with lights yes. as to our progress. Yes. So we're safe. Mm, yeah. Th <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, let's board. You run tours through here. We do, yeah, into the, we do. We do short trips into the uh, tunnel um, with a guide on board telling you about the history as you go. So you've got a skylight and, and seats for people to be inside so they can be Protected if it's dripping. Yeah, and you can, with that you can see the roof as well. So when we do, we're hoping to reintroduce the through trips like what we're doing for you today. And when we do that, you can see everything through the windows and that because the lights outside show it all up beautifully. So yeah. radio check. Radio check, Rick. Radio check. <laughs> <laughs> we're a little close. It's good to be this close. <laughs> This is why we check. <laughs> <laughs> We're off yeah. into the stand edge. Longest, highest and deepest canal tunnel in Britain. Wow. We're only beaten by two in the world. So for doing this trip, we have to have a qualified boatmaster on board, which is me. So I'm, I'm the boss for this trip. <laughs> so get worried now. <laughs> So we have two bright lights leading the way. We have lights down the side of the boat, so viewers can see out the side. Every so often in the roof, there's a plate with a number on, and they tell you where you are in the tunnel. Okay. Uh, the legging plates, because when, obviously they didn't have motors like we do, right. um, or engines, so they had to use the feet against the wall. Yeah. Laying on the, on, they lay on the boat, with the, one person with the feet out one side, one person with the feet out the other and then walk along the walls to push it through. Wow. So, the um, legging plates, there's one just coming up, because you were laid on your back, you could see them. There's, there it is. Oh, they count down as we go, and give you an idea of how far you've got to go. This uh, will not talk to outside world now. Right. Um, it's still useful to have it with us, because if the shadow's close by, we can speak to the shadow on this. Okay. Um, so, the, the man in the van following us through. Right. Which is not normally something you want, a man in a van following you, but uh, in this case, it's a good thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's very true. Very true. Yeah. They call him the shadow. Yes. <laughs> And just to say, we can't see the end. It, nope. it goes into darkness. It's because when they built it, they dug from both ends um, and they sank shafts down, but they got the alignment slightly wrong. So in the middle, with a big S bend to go around because the mist. They were 26 I, feet out of the centre. They were 26 feet apart when they were yeah. tunneling towards each other, so yeah. they they did an S turn to connect yeah. it. These old stones here from 1794. So this is original yeah. tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. And there are certain parts that have been restored or reinforced. Yeah, right like there, there's a brickwork there. Yeah. These brick arches were put in to strengthen the tunnel. They were done again in the 1890s when they built the double track railway tunnel, but um, they weren't, it wasn't bricked up all the way through just because you can imagine it saves a bit of money. Brick a bit, miss a bit, brick a bit, miss a bit. This gives the strength that's needed but costs less. less. So um, it was a Yorkshireman. That's deep, deep pockets, pockets deeper than your hands, you see, right. you can't reach the money. It's smart, some say <laughs> cheap, others say smart. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's... Why is this bit so wet? So this is pool shaft. So what this is, is it's one of the uh, access shafts right. that we used to build the tunnel. Now it's used for ventilation. Okay. So what it is, is you, you'll see shortly, it's, I think the pool's about 512 feet deep. So the water is coming down through the hills. So and they... then naturally it's just draining into here. Right. So they used it to build it and they would pass material yep. down or up yep. and now it's a ventilation mm -hmm. shaft. Oh, yep. clever. <laughs> yeah. you, you got absolutely drenched out here. Look at that! I mean, you think you're protected from the it's weather. Just, it's so nice on a day like this. Just on a hot cool summer day. <laughs> so private boats today, we have to measure them up to make sure they'll fit before we set off. This is the narrowest bit right here. 
Yeah. Well, the word like, like one to two inches and three inches. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One, a one point past six. We've now been in the tunnel for about 20 minutes, and I still can't see the end. I'm starting to think about how long three miles actually is. Now, with modern electric boats, this is comfortable and easy, but I couldn't imagine legging a fully loaded narrow boat through. You see on the right hand side there, it says 6 plus 48, yep. and then underneath it says sorry, because they measured wrong there. <laughs> up, up until that point, they measured every 10 meters there, they measured up 8 meters instead of 10. So oh, it says sorry oh, underneath. So instead of 6 plus yeah. 50, it's 6 plus 48. Yeah. Let's go take a quick peek and see fa how far in we are. Yeah. So apparently we're 650 feet in. And off. Here we go. You can see a little bit of the light where we came in, but when you look forward, you, you still can't see where we're going. What's your favorite part of the tunnel? Um, I would say the central section is the most interesting. They, um, it has the uh, the largest of three wides in it. Um, oh. It also has the famous S bend. Yeah, not to mention the tightest place of all in the whole of the tunnel. So, uh, so it, it has the widest, the windiest, and the tightest. Yeah, bend. yeah, that's all in the central section. Yeah. All right. So you like all the action. I get it. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, the, when, when you guiding boats through that yeah. is the, the bit with the interest it's the yeah. exciting bit yeah. yeah yeah so how do you drive this thing anyways so this is where the skill of driving this comes into play because you're having to like do little mini corrections constantly but i'm responding to what i can hear and feel from the back it's a little joystick that controls the angle of the front propellers so you can keep the boat from bouncing off the side of the walls it's a pretty clever little system with little arrows to show you where you're heading. And I'm being given the chance to drive. Now, this is going to be trickier with it being slower. We're coming up to a narrow point. That's it. I never expected I'd get to drive a boat, an electric boat through the longest tunnel, yeah. the longest canal tunnel in the UK. Yeah. Wow. And it's, it's a one-handed job. Hey, it's like two of you know. <laughs> I've been practicing for four weeks on four different boats for this. I'll let you take it back. Thanks so much. <laughs> that was great. And so this is original just rock from the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. So we're coming up under original rock from the mountain. No, no reinforcement here. Beautiful. It's loads of bare rock. It's gorgeous to see different shapes and colours. It changes all the way as well. You can see uh, geologists love it. I have to say, when I was told it would be two hours in a tunnel, I expected it to all look the same. Not yeah. not segment after segment of changing scenery. In here, That's really. It. That's it. <laughs> That's from the man they call the Shadow. That's it. That's the one. Now, this opening in the tunnel is one of the connecting shafts between the canal and train tunnels. But for us, it's a safety stop to reconnect with the base and let them know we're okay. This is incredible. And so that right there is the disused railway tracks, the old one, the single use. Yeah, single spot. And then somewhere over there, running alongside is the, uh, the double track. All right. Rick, this is the trip boat departing 32. Okay, received. I'll uh, talk to Alistair when you get to 24 over. Roger. That's it. Back on the boat. We keep going along. Yeah. That's our checkpoint check-in. This yeah. looks like a modern art museum yeah. that you'd be yeah. in. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. This bit's quite wet, what we're coming up to now. Right. Um, this is another one of the shafts right up to the surface. So, Luke, you're good out here on your own? Uh, I don't know <laughs> Well, we'll be right behind you. <laughs> well done, Luke. I'm impressed. So, you see with this as well, the geology of the mountain is that if you see where the, um, the striation marks yeah. come in down, yeah. When you get to the middle of the tunnel, you'll, you start to see them. They go down. down the other side. Wow, so you know so at that point you've you reached the middle. Sort of like the, the, yeah, it's sort of like the generic middle of the tunnel. Wow. Yeah. Okay, this big piece of rock came off really cleanly. 
<laughs> All right, I was with you on that one. This gets knocked regularly by boats. Yeah. It looks like prehistoric paintings, but it's just modern boats going through. Yeah. Wow. If you're into geology, a tour of this tunnel should definitely be added to your bucket list. It's fascinating. How, how deep yeah. is it? Um, it's deeper than me because I've fallen in and couldn't touch the bottom. So, uh, yeah, 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 that's the way I found out. But, uh, yeah. Deep enough. The reason it's so deep is it's used as a reservoir for feeding the locks either side. Because when you fill a lock up with water to get a boat up, it uses a lot of water from here. So if you have a lot of boat traffic, you're using a lot of water all at once. But so, this, this bit is beautiful. You see the see the layers on oh, it. Had yeah. a, a river delta. It opened up wide. So um, the it slowed down so whatever it was carrying it deposited layer upon layer and these are all the layers that you, you can, can see you can clearly see the layers like you said like tiger stripes yeah it's just mesmerizing it though, is isn't it? isn't it it absolutely is i love it i, I always do i don't know what it is but i always get excited when i come in here who knew a dark tunnel could be so beautiful yeah that's it, that's it. so we're supposed to meet the shadow here <laughs> if he if he really exists this is another connecting shaft. And so that's the support vehicle, the shadow that's following us along, making sure we're meeting these checkpoints and safe just in case anything goes wrong. But he's there, we're here, we're gonna keep going. We found a duck in here once. Really? Yes, oh yeah. We, we, we woke it up. And it's, I, I tried to catch it, I, I was a bit worried about it, so I tried to catch it, but it swam off and just went toward Diggle quite happily. So I've not seen it since, so it must have come out happily. Wow. So made it out. A no duck problem. wandered yeah. in this far. We're just approaching the tightest place in the tunnel, which leads directly into the S bend where uh, the uh, final junction was made when they were digging the tunnel. After this, we can safely say I've driven you around the bend. <laughs> oh yeah, here's the S to the left. They had crews digging the tunnel from both ends, but when they met here in the middle, they were off by 26 feet. So they had to build this S bend to connect the two directions and complete the stand edge tunnel. Now we've been in here for an hour and this is the most significant part of the tunnel. It's about the deepest point below ground where the uh, boundary is now between Greater Manchester and West Yorkshire. So how deep is it? It'll be over 600 feet below ground here. That's pretty deep. So you know, roughly, roughly as far below ground as you are above sea level. And so this is also the highest canal tunnel in this the UK? Is, this is the highest water level on the canal system in the UK, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. This is the highest point on the canal system yeah, in the UK. Right. Right. Yeah. Wow. So you go up a lock through here and this yeah. is... Isn't that mind-blowing that you're at the deepest point underground and the highest point in the entire canal system. There are so many facts about this tunnel that make it so interesting. But the most interesting parts to me are the different types of stone, brick, concrete, and rock that line the tunnel. And with the perfectly still water below, it is visually mesmerizing. But I wonder how dark it actually is in here without the lights. So we are going to turn the lights off for a second and see how dark it is. Three, two, one. Oh well, yeah, you can't see anything. Amazing, isn't it? Quiet, really quiet. Wow, <laughs> that's like a sensory deprivation tank almost down here. It is, isn't it? Now, surely we're getting close to the other side by now. There it is, barely. But that exit is still a very long way away. And this is an opening into the railway tunnel next to us. So right there is where the live trains pass by. You have to time it just right and you could see them, but we're not, we're not gonna wait around. And on the left is another shaft that lets water flow into the canal. Yeah. Oh, 
easy. A half an hour left? It's about, about half an hour in. You can make your own jokes about the light at the end of the tunnel, but who knew being underground would be so beautiful? Right, so how so, did they work the one-way system? A young lad called Thomas Bourne used to look after it. He was only 12 when he got the job. Um, 12 years old? Yeah, 12 year old. And he'd start work at something like five o'clock in the morning as well. Imagine trying to get a 12 year old up at five in the morning. That wouldn't happen nowadays, would it? But, um, so he'd start work, he'd um, collect the toll money from the boats that were waiting at Marsden End. They lived at Marsden. Say there were 10 boats, for instance, they'd set off legging the tunnel. He'd then uh, close the gates behind them so anyone else coming had to wait the next turn to go through. Um, he'd walk their horses up over the top. Um, while they were legging the tunnel, so he'd be over the top waiting for them at the other end. What he'd do, he'd, he'd let some more in the other end. He'd know how many, he'd know they were all out safely because all the horses would be claimed. He wouldn't need to remember how many were going through because obviously they'd claim the horses when they came out. So um, any horses left over, he knew there were still boats coming through the tunnel. Um, and then uh, so he'd walk back, in the, and that was his morning's work. Then in the afternoon, he'd do exactly the same there and back. So four times a day across the moors in all weather conditions every day. The only day off we'd have would be Christmas Day or if the canal was closed for any reason, which sometimes it was, you know, maintenance or if it had frozen over or whatever, you know, things like that. For, he did it for 37 years. So, uh, so from 12 to 49. That's a career. A lot of walking, yeah. 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 So this part here is the end of the original tunnel. That's right. But it's been extended another 200 meters or so yes. to help the train get across as well as there's a station on this side. They needed to add some land so it had to tunnel further. It's like a mirage in the distance. I, I don't know if my eyes are ready for sunlight again. How long have we been in here? We can't, we've been in two and a half hours. So, yeah, here we come. Daylight once again. I have enjoyed every minute in the Stand Edge Tunnel, but as we approach the exit, I have to admit I'm looking forward to seeing the sun again. Absolutely gorgeous. You can warm up in this as well. Really nice. Now this is a sight for sore eyes. Very and nice. that was the Stand Edge Tunnel, the longest and deepest and highest canal tunnel in the UK. My goodness. Well, thanks guys. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> we'll leave you here. We're gonna turn around and we've gotta go back through and return the boat now. <laughs> <laughs>